Um, I'm Dan Miles. Uh, I'm work for the in the capacity building team in Historic England, uh, and we're the, the government agency for the historic environment. Um, just very quickly, capacity building team means basically means that we work to support the sector, so the historic environment sector, um, with a big onus on supporting the planning system, so supporting commercial contract archaeology and the way that the archaeology and the built environment is managed. Uh, capacity building team, I deal with research frameworks, another colleague deals with guidance, another, colleague, uh, another uh, team, part of the team deals with the training, and another one does access to information, so it's like a whole package of support that we're trying to do for the sector. So that's just a very quick intro to where, where I'm coming from and why we're doing this. So I'm going to do a very quick introduction to research frameworks because that is the, the idea that uh, that's the bit I'm involved in. Drivers for change, introduce a model and the digital resources that we're creating and then just talk about some of the issues and some of the things. And hopefully, I'm, I'm going to hopefully ask some questions we can hopefully get some answers in the discussion like how to sustain, maintain communities and things. So research frameworks, I don't know if everyone's aware of them, but um, the model that was created in the mid-90s by Adrian Olivier in, in England is the one we use. Um, it basically are a number of geographical and thematical. So we have regional research frameworks, we have other ones like period, um, mesolithic, or even things like the pottery. And basically they're made up of three main areas. One is a synthesis, one is a, a resource assessment. What do we know? What is the current understanding in a region in the Roman period, for example? Then the next two sections is research agenda, the questions we want to ask, the gaps in our knowledge, and a strategy of how we're going to achieve them. So these are the sort of various different ones. So you've got maritime ones, ceramic, mesolithic, and then the regional research frameworks. And these are the ones that are really used and supporting the planning system. So, why are we uh, tampering with a, a model? Why are we changing it? Well, the model is sort of developed in the mid-90s. Things have changed. Um, part of my role was basically to look at this whole area and say, where are we going? What are we doing? So I started off writing a strategy. Then we uh, had a, a project done by consultancy PyTech, reviewing research frameworks, the use, the whole area of that. And out of that came another strand, which was looking at the involvement of community research. In England, I know in, not in a lot of other parts of Europe it doesn't happen, but there's a large amount of research inter uh, interventions, archaeological interventions undertaken by community groups, large amount of work undertaken, large amount of research generated. But we're trying to see how that can be um, brought into the systems. So basically on the research frameworks, these are the main areas we looked at. One, they're monographic pu uh, monograph publications. Some of these are 350 pages long, huge. No con connectivity and cohesion. So you have regional ones, but none of them talk to each other. They're all created separately, out like that. It's like having a completely separate set, set of states. We're in a digital world now. You know, things have moved on. Out of date, as soon as you publish them, it takes two years to publish it, and it's out of date. And the whole reason for using these is that you're basing the evidence if they're making decisions and planning. So you're making it already on information that is already out of date. And they're not non-inclusive. I mean, is at the time, they were generated using through um, research networks, academic, commercial, local authority. But there is a lack of community engagement in the process, and we've moved on a lot since then. So last year, we had a, a research report, um, a report undertaken by uh, Worcestershire um, Archives and Library Service, looking at the potential value of community research for enhancing historic environment records. So these are sort of the uh, the sites and monuments that evidence we have. And the other one is the research frameworks. So is the research that's undertaken, does it have value? Could we actually use some of the research, some of the stuff that comes out to actually uh, support our systems? Could we actually in embrace some of the research? Because it's, at the moment, it hasn't been as much, it hasn't really been um, used as much as, say, commercial archaeology uh, work. Um, so, we found, I'll move on slightly more, but we found on the community one, there is a vast amount of research being undertaken from community groups, but it hasn't really had any engagement with the processes in terms of the professional side of things, i.e. the management of the historic environment. So there is that gap, and there's a gap of understanding and gap of knowledge. So from all this work, we had a, there are lots of recommendations. Like all these things, you have hundreds of recommendations. But the three that I'm being concentrating now here 
is one, removing research frameworks from the paper up to a web-based system, trying to like to host new research frameworks, improving the coordination in their more inclusive development, i.e. engaging with other groups, other people who do research, actively participating in the creation of these, and then that's, for example, even into the societies. So it's the idea if you have a regional research framework, but actually potentially you're building on the strength of local knowledge. So we're sort of tapping in the sort of bottom up as well. So the new model, next steps. So it's, it's a strange one. I've spent ages trying to work all this out, how to try to explain to, to people. There's the online tech bit, and then there's the actual creation of the content. But the content, i.e. the research framework, and in that content, it's the process of creating that content. So being more inclusive in case you have more people. So it's sort of the two strands. Um, and this is an important one. It's not just creating another website. It's not just creating something that's online. It's actually the, sort of the three approaches we're trying to change. So one is the managing research framework. So the whole way, how do we update them? How do we keep them alive? How are we more inclusive? Actually, by doing that, you're structuring the content. So you're moving from book to web. And then also it's the process of engaging people and promoting what we're trying to do in these areas, certainly in the regional ones, the establishment of research communities. And we'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. So Historic Indian are funding three projects, three regional projects to update the content and recreate the research frameworks in those three regions. And another project is the actual, the tech bit, the wiki-based platform. But they're being managed together as a whole thing so, for example, we have workshops between the three project teams and the, the people who are developing it and trying to solve it as a sort of a program of work. So, these are the three research frameworks we're looking at, the northeast, the northwest of England, which also straight away you have that sort of the contact, you have the border contact. This is why we need to move across those um, statutory borders. And then the east of England. And the other one is the online platform, which is that being undertaken by Lambert Research Limited. So there they actually be creating that side of things. So those are the two strands. So this is what the sort of the main bit of talking about it today is the three, the key areas, the platform, one thing, the content, and then building the research community. So I'm not gonna go too much on the platform, but each research framework is an individual research framework. It needs to be managed by its own research community, its own set of things. So that's one of the principles. You can't just put everything on the whole across the platform. But then all three have to be searchable and accessible across. So it's sort of having managed individually, but then cross-searched across it. And it's based on the wiki idea. It's up to everyone how they uh, look at this, it, but the idea of the wiki is it, you can add content, you can change things. That's the whole point. Rather than, we're not saying it should be uh, open to everyone to do anything they want to do. This has to be managed by those groups. It's the control of those community groups to do and see how it is. I banned the, uh, the, the wiki word at one point because everyone got very nervous, but I think we're, we're moving forward. <laughs> so basically, we want to change this lovely book, which is very nice, to a dynamic wiki-based resource. Actually, we want to do all three, so you can cross-search against, I'm interested in the Roman period, I'm interested in a certain element, uh, what research questions do you have uh, across a pipeline between the northeast and northwest, between counties, I will be able to search across that. But the actual platform is going to be expandable because there are I think probably actively about 35, 40 research frameworks out there, and there's absolutely <coughs> no reason why we can't put them all up there and then do the same thing. There's some differences we'll talk about on why we need to change how we produce these, but in terms of the website or the, the platform, it's expandable, and we can look at it in that. So I'm not worried about the tech side. It is easy. Everyone does websites. Everyone does wiki. So it's easy. It's no problem but it's more the idea of this slight culture change for, for a lot of people who use them and a lot of people who can create the content because we're going from the monograph, the academic monograph, to a web publication, a book, to a wiki. And then this is also thing to make 
us for everyone to be able to cross search about things we need to think about structuring the text so rather than having just a, a text on the Roman period in a certain area we have to think about how we can look at that how can we structure it slightly but the thing is is that this is not being done by the techie people this is going to be done by the people creating the content so that's the, the, the change as well so in terms of this side of things which is a, the culture change of structuring the text tagging keywords and thinking about the relevance of questions because what we found is that all the regional frameworks all had very very similar questions in fact you know half of them were, were identical so you're thinking about you know do we need to have a set of 60 questions that are all the same can we not think about doing it slightly differently so I'm just going to run a couple of things um, we're looking at uh, structuring, you know, synthesis of the text with controlled terminologies. So on the left-hand side, you've got a, a chapter of Roman. Someone's written a, a Roman, Roman army, Roman roads, whatever. We need to make sure that those texts <coughs> are indexed or tagged with the correct terminologies that are generated by the fish, is the, which is the sort of the looks at the controlled thesauri and the vocabularies is the, in in the UK. Make sure that those vocabularies are being used, because then we can cross search. It's all easy. Um, looking at the research questions, just having this idea of having a question. I mean, we've got a, a, a workshop next week about it because we haven't quite worked out how this is going. But it's, you know, you have a question, what is it relevant? Is it relevant to, to this area, to this county, this town, to this region? Is it a national relevance? Because each of the research frameworks, the projects are being managed differently. Each of them look at what are the priorities for these regions. But if the priority for the region is the same, we have one question, you just think across. But then also associating it with other things like guidance. Um, how can I answer the question? What scientific techniques can help me? Other resources, bibliographies. So just making it a bit more connected. Uh, just as an example here, so how is the development of Fiji and forts related? It's Roman defence, settlement and land use. So these are sort of the areas that you can search across. It's relevant in Cumbria and Northumberland. It's not relevant, for example, in Sussex. It might not be a question or a priority in that area, so it doesn't need to be tagged with that area. And then Vichy, the fort. So. And then these are the other resources. So the um, Archaeological Data Service, the Digital Library, that's where you find all the, um, the reports and the grey literature. Some of those may have um, information on Roman forts in Cumbria, Northumberland, and things like that, and guidance documents, the introduction to heritage assets, for example. But this is the interesting one. This is me. Five minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> this is where it needs to be done is with the teams. So as I say, each regional framework has been created by a project team. They're having workshops to do it. So all this information needs to be done at that stage, not by people at Lambwood or those other people in the room here who deal with data standards. It's not their job. This is the job of the people creating it and thinking about it. Because otherwise, you have all these workshops, you have all this great stuff, fantastic questions, and you've got another month of work trying to index everything. And it's just going to be a nightmare. So it's the way of moving forward. It's a slightly different you know, attitude to it. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. So all that other stuff's easy. I've got, <laughs> I feel in control. <laughs> I can control the terminologies, control the structure, I can control the, building the website. I've not, I haven't got a problem problem, not it's not a problem, the concern is the community because this whole question of how do we, we can build resources but how do we keep things going? How do we create a community that will take these on and be part of it? So it's the way we're trying because of the, the running all the projects together is creating the collaborative space, this resource, the research framework online, but through a collaborative process i.e. through each of the project teams working with all their researchers in their regions. So and in many ways it's creating regional research communities. Um, they've already been doing that, we've done this a lot, but we haven't always engaged with everyone and we certainly haven't engaged with community groups and local societies. But it's that idea of having collective research priorities, we're, we're pretty good at that. So it's then having those, making decisions on those, but then actually getting people to use them and keep things going. Updating the website, using a wiki like it should be used. Um, 
So I've just done an example to finish off, really. Um, one of the projects is the Northwest, the research framework. They've been working really hard, <coughs> pardon me, partnership project, three project leaders on it, Algea, which is the local authority area for the Northwest, um, CBA, which is the Council of British Archaeology, they represent the community groups in, in that region, and you've got Salford University, um, which is the academic partner. So it's actually a really, really good example of having three project leaders or the sort of the team being built around those different aspects. Um, they've also got a very strong, um, what's the thing, what do you call it, not inheritance, a strong um, background in this. They've been working on a lot of projects crossing different areas, certainly a lot of industrial heritage. We're using industrial specialists in society, so they've got a good um, pedigree and background. So they're doing the engagement already established networks. This is really important. They're not, we're not creating things anew. This is already happening. So we're working on different things, groups that have been created by Heritage Lottery Funding, uh, other groups that are CBA groups, so building it up. But inviting them to the thematic workshops, the period workshops, being much more open and transparent about it. And also participating in, in other people. So it's not just, this is what we're doing, come and see us, actually going out uh, and trying to sort of be involved in other people's projects and groups and societies and conferences. Um, very important, the community group side of things, they are partners in these projects, a lot of the local society is going to be invited, but we're trying to move away from this active, active community conference, you have a conference, lots of people there, they watch, they sit, everyone enjoys it, but it's that sort of passive conference attendance to actually look at what are your research interests? What are the research questions that you'd like to do? What are the, when you do your research and you do your excavations, why? Can we build on those? Can we build that upwards? And I think that's going to be really interesting. Um, building bridges was the theme of the conference. Add that in somewhere. Um, I think this is where it's going to be very interesting, how we can build on the, up those local research agendas and go upwards towards regional questions. Um, this is the... The last slide, um, and this is a thing that we're trying to to cover by those different projects. But this is something I think this is not just for our my era of research frameworks. It's not just for archaeology. It's much broader. It's this idea that how do you maintain anything outside of a project environment? A project environment, whether it's a museum, whether it's an IT project, whatever it is, you have that dedicated time money, resource, it's easy. You have your goals, your milestones, you bang it out. As soon as it stops, what happens? And I've been involved in museum projects, exactly the same thing, huge community of people involved, finish the project, we go on to the next one. We're not interested in boat building, we're now interested in something else. Oh, we're gonna engage with all those people who are doing in that. It's very, very difficult. So this is the whole thing. I've stolen this, maintain the momentum from uh, David Knight, who's here. He's running another the East Midlands Research Framework Project. They've started this, and I really like that, maintaining the momentum. How do we maintain the momentum out of it? We can build the research spaces, but building a community that sustains them is the question. And I'm hoping everyone's going to give me loads of answers in the discussion. Okay, thank you.